<laughs> wow. <laughs> Everybody's been talking about this COVID weight. Like, you're going to get a lot of COVID weight. I've gained a lot of COVID weight. I'm like, not me. And then I put jeans on for the show tonight. I'm like, I've gained some COVID weight. <laughs> I should never have to jump into my jeans. Like, that's, that's a female move. I was jumping into my jeans, pointing my toes down, squeezing into my jeans. Not these. I borrowed these from the governor. These are not my jeans right here that I'm wearing. You know you gain weight when you leave your belt at home and you're like, I'll be fine. Because that belt digs into your stomach. You ever have the buckle dig into your stomach when you take your belt off at the end of the night? You're like, oh my goodness. I think I'm allergic to my buckle. I think there's some poison in my buckle. Why is it so itchy right there? That little spot gets so itchy. It feels so good to scratch that little area. Like, mm, mm. Moan when you're scratching it. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure when you start to gain weight is all I'm saying. I feel like... I don't know, during this whole thing, during everything going on, I feel like I, I've learned to fix a few things because I never really felt like a real man. Like, let me get that right. Like, I'm a real man. I have real man parts. That's a, I left that hanging a little weird. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I don't feel like I have enough tools, ties, and dress socks to be a real man. I feel like any real man I know has a lot of tools, a lot of ties, and a lot of dress socks. Where do you get all those tools from? Someone was like, you get those tools for gifts. I was like, ugh. If anyone ever left me $200 worth of tools, I'd be like, return them and get me four PlayStation games. <laughs> I need tool. When did, when did you get a lot of tools? I have three tools. I have a Phillips screwdriver, I have a flathead screwdriver, and, and I use my girlfriend's pliers. <laughs> you know how emasculated it is for your lady to be like, did you put my pliers back? And I was like, I was gonna use them again. She's like, well, put them back. <laughs> I'm in Boston and I'm saying this one night. I'm like telling him, like, I don't have a lot of tools. And the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me after a show happened. This lady follows me to my car. I'm in the parking lot walking to the car. And this lady goes, excuse me, comedian. Excuse me, honey. Excuse me, you don't have a hammer. You don't have a hammer, honey. And I was like, what? She was like, on stage you didn't say you had a hammer, honey. You don't have a hammer. And I didn't have the heart to tell her I own a home. I have a hammer. I just didn't say it. So I just went with it. I was like, no, no, I don't have a hammer. She goes, oh my goodness, give me a second. This lady runs to her car. She comes back. She goes, I always keep two hammers in my car, honey. You gotta have a hammer. <laughs> this lady gave me a hammer after the show. Who takes a hammer from somebody in a parking lot after a show? Tonight, when this is all over, I'll be in the parking lot collecting ice picks. If you have an ice pick, please, I have a wicker basket for you to drop them in outside. I'm not a handy guy. I grew up with my grandfather. My grandfather has a third grade education. He moved from North Carolina to Massachusetts. Third grade education, he can fix everything, right? Hot water, heating, plumbing, flooring, ceilings, two barbershops, three homes, fix everything. He can't even say three. He says one, two, shree, shree. I have a college degree. If I lose Wi-Fi, I can't fix anything, nothing. If I can't get on YouTube, nothing will ever get done. You ever watch a YouTube video, you're like, ooh, that's too advanced for me right there. What do they mean? <laughs> you ever watch a YouTube video, they're like, listen, before you do any electrical work in your home, everybody knows you need to go downstairs and turn off the main power source. I'm like, everybody doesn't know that. <laughs> I need to watch another video that leads up to this video. I thought <laughs> I could just use rubber handle tools and get the job done. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm that stupid. I see people judging me right now. I'm that stupid. I don't need to watch stupid people videos. I don't need to watch a video where they're like, listen, before you do any electrical work in your home, you want to step out of the bucket of water, all right? I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't speak fluent contractor. That's all I'm saying. Some people know how to do everything. You ever have a guy stand in front of your car and make the engine rev from the front? What? <laughs> Look at some of you, it's not a big deal to me. I'm like, he's a wizard. What is he touching? <laughs> the head gasket? The catalytic converter, I don't even know if that's the right stuff. I just know that stuff's under the hood. I don't even know. You ever hear a guy in front of your car like, Whoa. don't touch anything, I got it, chief. Whoa. This guy's magic. What I want to know is what's under his fingernails. Ugh. You ever see what's under his fingernails? Why are your fingernails so dirty? Ugh. Looks like you've been cutting portobello mushrooms and digging graves with your bare hands all day. What's under your nails? He's like, I work hard, that's what's under my nails. I'm like, you need to work hard at cleaning your fingernails. Looks like you got a French manicure with black tips. <laughs> Clean it up. 
You work with anybody over 55, 60 years old, they don't read the book. They just know. They're like, ah, the wiring goes up that wall, goes across there, comes down there. And they all say the same thing when you ask them how they know. How did you know? They'll go, common sense. I'm like, we don't have that anymore. We have the internet. All right, I'm Corey Rodriguez. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Corey, we're glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. I've been watching some of your stuff online. You, and, and, you know, people can download your comedy. Um, and it's great stuff. When did you decide? Was it when you were a kid or as an adult? When was that moment you said, I'm going to be a comedian? That's a good question. I mean, I was, uh, I was actually a criminal justice guy. I was a criminal justice major in, in college. And then when I got out, I, uh, I don't know, I've always been funny. But, like, not like, you know, thinking I want to be funny to other people, just to friends. And then, um, I don't know, I, I started doing improv comedy. Yeah. And just started it up. And going, I like, to the it. comedy clubs and stuff? And, yeah. Uh, going to do, like, yeah. Whose Line Is It Anyway type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I started doing that, and then I got into stand-up. And I just tried it and loved it and kept going with it. So, I mean, you go from criminal justice to making people laugh. Boy, then that's, that's crossing the spectrum, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, co comedy has taken a turn over the yeah. last few years because of political correctness. And so yeah. many people can't tell a joke anymore without offending people. Do you have sort of a, a measure? How do you pick the material that you do, s remain funny and relevant, but at the same time, you know, not worry so much that somebody is going to get their feelings all worked up? I don't stress about it too much. Good. Uh, because... Somebody is always going to be upset, no matter how nice I am, no matter how sweet it is, no matter how vulgar it is. Someone's always upset. Yeah. So, no, I don't stress out about it. Everybody's not going to like you. If you can get a good following of a million people that love you, great. The, the other millions, I don't know how many people are in the world, but all the rest of them can <laughs> like somebody else. <laughs> you know, you may have a future in politics because you got to have that kind of attitude about life. Is that every time you walk in a room, half the people in here hate your guts and the other yeah. half think you're great. So it's, it's, it maybe is something like that. But on the other hand, don't do it, Corey. <laughs> don't do it. You're a great comedian. You don't need to ruin your life. Uh, the quarantine. <laughs> no, I, trust me on this one. The quarantine has really messed up people who perform because yeah. things are shut down. Yeah. How do you make a living during a time when the clubs are closed and you can't do your normal... <laughs> That's a, that's, a, that's a great question. Something that I decided to do was uh, a lot of my friends were complaining about their kids, like um, reading to them at night and like every night and just like, not like they were complaining about reading to them. I don't want to make them sound like evil <laughs> people, but they're, you're with your kids all day <laughs> yeah. and now you're stuck in quarantine. There's no, you know, everyone's not playing with everyone. So it was just, it's intense. So I just wanted to give everybody an outlet. And so I created this thing called Corey Stories where I would read uh, children's books at night you know, and I brought my son on the show with me. So we read and we tell jokes and we do things and we give people about 30, 45 minutes to just relax and, and, and give the parents a little free time before bedtime so they don't have to read to the kids every night. And uh, that was awesome. And I did that. Still doing it now. Well, it's a great idea. I hope people will check out your material. Yep. They can download it. Uh, they can subscribe to your YouTube channel and, and lots of ways to get Corey Rodriguez and hopefully soon invite you to their community and... Uh, See you live, because we be awesome. had a great time doing it. Thank you, Corey. Thank you very much.